Welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, we will discuss second method of dispersion that is quartile deviation. Quartile deviation. First is interquartile range. Range is a crude measure because it takes into account only two extreme values that is the largest and the smallest. The effect of extreme values on range can be avoided if we use the measure of interquartile range. Interquartile range refers to the difference between the values of two quartiles. Symbolically, it is written interquartile range equals to Q3 minus Q1, where Q3 is upper quartile and Q1 is lower quartile. Next we come to quartile deviation that is semi interquartile range. Quartile deviation is known as the half of difference of upper quartile that is Q3 and the lower quartile that is Q1. It is half of the interquartile range that is range among the quartiles. So it is also known as the semi interquartile range. Symbolically it is written quartile deviation equals to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. And next we come to coefficient of quartile deviation. Quartile deviation is an absolute measure of dispersion. For comparative studies of variability of two distributions, we make use of relative measure known as coefficient of quartile deviation. It is used to compare the degree of variation in the series. It is defined as the ratio of difference between the upper quartile and lower quartile to their sum. Symbolically, coefficient of quartile deviation is written. Quartile deviation equals to Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. Calculation of interquartile range, quartile deviation and coefficient of quartile deviation. First, we will calculate in individual series. There is no frequency in individual series. We are just given the values of the variable that is x. We need to arrange the series into ascending or descending order. We apply the respective formula to find IQR that is interquartile range, QD that is quartile deviation and CQD that is coefficient of quartile deviation. Let us understand this with the help of a following illustration. We have to find IQR, QD and CQD from the following data that is 140, 160, 120, 80, 100, 180 and 200. So let's start with the solution. First we arrange data in ascending order. For that we will make a table of two columns. In the first column, we will write serial numbers and in the second column, we will write marks which is denoted by letter X. In the table, you can see that we have arranged the data in ascending order. Now for Q1, the formula is size of n plus 1 divided by fourth item. Here n is 7. So in place of n, we will write 7. So 7 plus 1 divided by 4, we will get size of second item. In the table, you can see that in place of second item, marks is 100. So Q1 is equals to 100. Now come to Q3. The formula for Q3 is size of 3 whole n plus 1 by 4th item. So here also in place of n, we will write 7. And after calculating it, we will get size of 6th item. In the table, you can see that in place of 6th item, marks is 180. So, Q3 is equals to 180. 
Now we will calculate interquartile range that is IQR. Formula is Q3 minus Q1. So it will be 180 minus 100. We will get 80 as IQR. Next is QD that is quartile deviation. The formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. After applying the values and calculating it, we will get 40 as quartile deviation. And next is CQD that is coefficient of quartile deviation. Formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. After calculating it, we will get 0 0.28 as coefficient of quartile deviation. This is how we will calculate quartile deviation, interquartile range and coefficient of quartile deviation in individual series. Calculation of interquartile range, quartile deviation and coefficient of quartile deviation in discrete series. There is corresponding frequency f given against value of variable x. x being a definite value in the series. We need to arrange the data into ascending or descending order. We apply the respective formula to find IQR, QD and CQD. Let us understand this with the help of a following illustration. In this we have to find out IQR, QD and CQD from the following data. In the data we are provided with marks and number of students. So for the solution first we will make the table of three columns. In the first column, we will write marks, which is denoted by letter X. Marks are already arranged in the ascending order. In the second column, we will write number of students, which is denoted by letter F, which is frequencies. And in the third column, we will write cumulative frequency, which are the add-offs of frequencies. So by adding of the frequency, we will get sigma f or n, which is equals to 199. So for the q1, we will write the formula that is size of n plus 1 by 4th item. In place of n, we will write 199. And after calculating it, we will get size of 50th item. So in the table, you can see that 50th item is falling in cumulative frequency 56. So, Q1 will be 155. Next, we come to Q3. The formula is size of 3 whole n plus 1 by 4th item. And we will write 199 in place of n. And after calculating it, we will get size of 150th item. You can see in the table that 150th item is falling under cumulative frequency of 158. So, Q3 will be 165. Now we will calculate interquartile range that is IQR. The formula is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is 165 and Q1 is 155. So after deducting 155 from 165 we will get 10 as IQR. Next we come to QD that is quartile deviation. Formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. After calculation, we will get 5 as QD. Next, we come to CQD, that is coefficient of quartile deviation. Formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. After calculating it, we will get 0 0.031 as coefficient of quartile deviation. This is how we will calculate IQR, QD and CQD in discrete series. Now we come to calculation of interquartile range, quartile deviation and coefficient of quartile deviation in continuous series. There is corresponding frequency f given against values of the variable x, x being in the form of class intervals. 
we need to arrange the series into ascending or descending order. We apply the respective formula to find IQR, QD and CQD. Let us understand this with the help of a following illustration. We have to find out IQR, QD and CQD from the following data. In the data we are provided with marks which is in class intervals and number of students. So for the solution we will make the table of three column. In the first column we will write marks which is denoted by letter X. In the second column we will write number of students that is denoted by letter F which is frequency and in the third column we will write CF that is cumulative frequency. By adding up the frequency we will get sigma F equals to N equals to 60. So for the Q1 the formula is size of N by 4th item. Here N is 60. So after calculating it we will get size of 15th item. In the table you can see that 15th item is falling under cumulative frequency of 18. So class interval will be 10 to 15 and preceding frequency will be 10. So the formula for Q1 will be Q1 equals to L1 plus N by 4 minus cumulative frequency divided by F into I where L1 is lower limit of class interval N is number of frequency CF is cumulative frequency F is the respective frequency and I is the class interval so we will write the values and after calculating it we will get Q1 which is 13.125 now we will calculate Q3 which is size of 3 n by 4th item. After calculating it we will get size of 45th item. As you can see in the table 45 is falling under cumulative frequency 50. So class interval will be 25 to 30. The formula will be Q3 equals to L1 plus 3 n by 4 minus CF whole divided by F into I where L1 is the lower limit which is 25 in place of n we will write 60 cumulative frequency that is preceding poem cumulative frequency is 42 and class interval is 5 we will write the values and after calculating it we will get q3 which is equals to 26.875 after getting q1 and q3 now we will calculate iqr that is interquartile range formula is q3 minus q1 by applying the values we will get 13.75 as IQR. Now we come to QD that is quartile deviation. Formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. After putting up the values and calculating it we will get 6.875 as quartile deviation. And the last will be coefficient of quartile deviation that is CQD. Formula is Q3 minus Q1 divided by q3 plus q1 after putting up the values and calculating it we will get 0.34 as cqd so this is how we will calculate iqr qd and cqd in continuous series now we come to merits and demerits of quartile deviation First, we will discuss merits of quartile deviation. It is rigidly defined. It is very easy to understand and interpret. Next, it is very useful to measure in case of open end distribution. And the last is it is not affected by extreme values. There are some demerits also. First, it does not depend on all values of the variable as it ignores the first 25% and the last 25% of the items 
thus it cannot be regarded as a reliable measure of variability second not capable of further algebraic treatment it is in a way of positional average and does not study variation of the values of a variable from any average next it is affected by fluctuations in the sample a change in the view of a single item may in many cases affects its value considerably and the last demerit is it's an absolute measure it cannot be used for comparison so these are some of the merits and demerits of quartile deviation Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.